let me move on now to talking about uh, CSP op optimization, which is like the second task. So uh, in contrast to CSP satisfiability, if I ask you to find you know, the optimum assignment, the one that satisfies the most constraints, even if that's not 100% of the constraints, this is really hard. It's NP-hard for all but the most simple CSPs. I mean, it's already NP-hard for max cut, as you well know. So uh, in light of that, when things are NP-hard, you have to try some mitigation strategies. And one of them is uh, what's called approximation. So that's the mitigation strategy I'll talk about in this lecture. So let me make a definition. Let's say an efficient algorithm A for a particular CSP is an alpha beta approximation algorithm. If it has the following property, uh, for all instances where the optimum is at least beta, the algorithm A is guaranteed to find an assignment whose value is at least alpha. Okay. That's alpha beta. And I have this little mnemonic. I think of beta is standing for best. Like that's the best uh, assignment achieves beta. And like for me, alpha stands for algorithm. Uh, it's like what the algorithm is promised to achieve in this case. Actually, let me put a little pause here because there's a question. I was asked, even if uh, it is NP hard, presuming, uh, ah, even if it's NP hard, presumably meaning this meta problem of deciding whether a predicate uh, leads to a P problem or an NP-complete problem. Is it in exponential time? It seems like the description of a CSP is usually very short for the problem we care about. Right. Yeah, so it is uh, in exponential time. It's probably in P space. And um, some version of it, if like, there's some simple property of the CSP, there's like a simple and natural property of CSPs called being a core some algebra thing, which I forget, which if it happens, then the meta problem is in P. But yeah, it is true that like for the CSPs, like we actually care about, you know, they have, their description is like finite size. You know, there's like 14 predicates and the domain is of size three. So like, you don't have to really worry about, you can in practice decide if it's a P type or an NP complete type of CSP. Yeah, so this uh, meta problem is sort of a theoretical interest only. Okay, let's get back to CSP optimization. Uh, so this is my kind of, slightly complicated definition of what is an approximation algorithm. And I built efficiency, like polynomial time into the definition, just so I can stop saying, oh, an efficient approximation algorithm, efficient approximation algorithm. I'll just assume when I say an approximation algorithm, it means a polynomial time one. And also I'm gonna allow randomized algorithms, uh, in which case the guarantee should be that it finds a value, uh, an assignment of value, at least alpha in expectation. And one thing I want to mention is that one algorithm A can simultaneously be an alpha beta approximation algorithm for many betas. And let me uh, give a clarifying example. What is the, uh, what do we prove, uh, the first part of this lecture, we proved that this Gomans-Williamson algorithm for max cut, what we proved is that it's a 0.878 beta comma beta approximation algorithm for every beta, right? What we proved there is that whatever the best value is, beta, the Gomans-Williamson algorithm is guaranteed to get you at least 0.878 times beta. Okay, that like a 0.878 ratio approximation algorithm means this, that you're like 0.878 beta comma beta for every beta. But it can be interesting to look about, you know, guarantees that are not just of this type, like ratio factor times beta comma beta for every beta. Okay. Uh, so let me give a couple examples. Uh, there's simpler example or algorithms for max cut than Gomes Williamson one. Uh, for example, just randomly partitioning the vertices or just um, like doing local search in a greedy way, going through vertices one by one and putting them on the better side and then being done. And uh, as we saw before, at least for random partition, these are like a half comma beta approximation algorithms for every beta. I should add here like for all beta because they're actually guaranteed to cut at least half of the edges, no matter what the optimum is. Okay. And here's another like example use of this terminology. There exists one comma one approximation algorithms for two sad. Well, what is a one comma one approximation algorithm? It's an algorithm that's guaranteed to find you an assignment of value one, hundred percent, whenever the optimum is one. Okay, which it means a satisfiability algorithm or satisfy, uh, algorithm that finds satisfying assignments when they exist. Should have mentioned that alpha will always be at most beta. Uh, and in fact, 
one, uh, it's not often stated this way in uh, like undergraduate classes, but one algorithm that is a uh, polynomial time satisfiability algorithm for TSAT is to write down a natural LP relaxation and just uh, check whether the optimum value is one. Turns out that LP opt is one if and only if the TSAT instance is satisfiable. Okay, uh, so that's all I want to say about uh, optimization for now. Uh, any questions? If not, I'll talk about this third task, the certification task, which you might have heard about a little bit less. So here's my definition again. Uh, I'll say a certification algorithm for a kind of CSP is any algorithm that given an instance i, it outputs a correct statement, like a true statement of the form, optimum of i is at most beta star. So it outputs a number beta star, which it guarantees is an upper bound on the optimum value. And ideally beta star should be as small as possible. And now we can make a similar definition. We say that a, a CSP certification algorithm is an alpha beta certification algorithm if the following holds. Whenever the optimum value is less than alpha, the certificate that the algorithm is guaranteed output will be less than beta. Okay, it's always good when the certificate value is smaller. So let me give some algorithms uh, that explain this. And the most canonical example of a certificate certification algorithm, let's forget this alpha beta stuff for a moment. The most canonical example of a certification algorithm is just an algorithm that like takes a CSP, considers it to be an integer linear program, relaxes it to a linear program or semi-definite program, and outputs the like LP optimum value, right? We're always talking about maximization problems. So the LP optimum value uh, is always an upper bound on the true optimum value. And you can compute it in polynomial time. And so like, that's a great notion of a certification algorithm, like just outputting the LP relaxation value. And uh, even better would be, you know, with LPs, they have a dual and the dual is like sort of a very explicit certificate uh, of a statement like this. It's really just like, it's some multipliers for the uh, constraints in the LP, which when you add up the constraints with multipliers turns into the inequality, optimum is at most some number. Good. And uh, just to get a little warmed up for this alpha beta notion, let's think about what is a one comma one certification algorithm. It's nothing more than a satisfiability algorithm. Why? Because what is a one comma one certification algorithm? It's supposed to be an efficient algorithm that has the following property. Whenever the optimum value is strictly less than one, so whenever it's unsatisfiable, the algorithm outputs, like beta star, less than one. So it'll output a number less than one together with the guarantee that the optimum is less than one. So it's an algorithm that whenever the instance is unsatisfiable, like is guaranteed to like say, I certify this instance is unsatisfiable. Okay. And so in that way, it can be used as a satisfiability algorithm. You run the algorithm. If it certifies unsatisfiability, then you're like, great, it's unsatisfiable. And if it fails to, if it outputs like one as its number, then you're like, well, it must be satisfiable. Okay, so now uh, in the remainder of the lecture, I want to uh, talk about this kind of confusing point. Like what is the difference or what's the deal with approximation versus certification? Because it turns out they're both very important problems in the study of CSPs and algorithms and they're different problems, but like the difference is kind of subtle. So let's talk about this now. An alpha beta approximation algorithm searches for an assignment. It's like a search problem for an assignment, okay? And just to remind you, the guarantee is that when the instance happens to have value, optimum value, at least beta, the algorithm will give you back a solution of value, at least alpha. An alpha beta certification algorithm also kind of searches for things, but it searches for like a tight upper bound on opt. Okay, so again, it has a property that when the optimum is strictly less than alpha, it certifies the statement like optimum uh, is less than beta. Okay, and now let me try to really clarify the difference here. For the max cut problem, the Gomans Williamson algorithm of first solve the SDP, get the vectors, then do this random hyperplane rounding to convert them to like an actual cut and output that cut. That's an approximation algorithm, right? It finds a good solution. 
And in particular, like whenever the optimum cut is beta, it guarantees to find a solution that's at least 0.878 times beta. On the other hand, there's a, like a, a lesser thing you could do. You could just solve the SDP. Don't, you know, maybe you didn't even figure out this random hyperplane thing. You just figured out, oh, I can write down this SDP, which is a relaxation. And therefore the SDP optimum value is an upper bound on the true optimum. Just solving the SDP and outputting the SDP op number is, I claim a certification algorithm. Actually, that's clear that it's a certification algorithm. It's just because the SDP op is always at most, or yeah, it's like an upper bound on the true op. I also claim though that it's a certification algorithm that's like 0.878 beta comma beta. And let's really understand why this is the case. So let me dive into this question. I claim that um, outputting the SDP value is a 0.878 beta comma beta certification algorithm for every value of beta. So why is this true? Well, fix some number beta, fix a number beta. And suppose you have a graph G whose maximum cut is strictly less than 0.878 beta. Could it be that when you write down the SDP for this graph and compute its optimum, the optimum is at least beta? I claim no. And uh, if my claim is true, then I have shown that this outputting SDP opt is a 0.878 beta comma beta certification algorithm, because I've shown that like whenever the opt is less than 0.878 beta, the SDP opt will be less than beta. And therefore the certified amount that you'll output will be less than beta. So why is it true that if the true opt is less than 0.878 beta, the SDP opt will also be less, that it could not be at least beta? The reason is we happen to know the gomans williamson algorithm, hyperplane rounding algorithm exists. And we know that the hyperplane rounding algorithm has the property that if the SDP opt is at least beta, it would find a cut achieving value at least 0.878 beta. But that's impossible because we're assuming the graph's max cut is less than 0.878 beta. Okay, so therefore, uh, the existence of this hyperplane rounding and its guarantees tell you that when the opt is less than 0.878 beta, the SDP opt will be at most beta. So just outputting the SDP opt is uh, at most, uh, is a 0.878 beta comma beta certification algorithm. So probably like you wouldn't know this fact about the algorithm that just outputs the SDP value unless you figured out this hyperplane rounding stuff. But, um, Nevertheless, this is the case. And in general, uh, the same phenomenon always holds, and you can you know, check for yourself that this is true in general. Whenever you have an alpha beta approximation algorithm, it's also an alpha comma beta certification algorithm. Uh, good, so the one thing I'm trying to conclude here is that the approximation task is strictly, well, it's at least as hard as the certification task. I got a question here which uh, said, do we have to talk about the de-randomized version of the hyperplane rounding instead of just the randomized rounding? Good question. I've kind of been brushing the difference under the rug. Actually, for making this deduction, we don't because actually, even if you just know that the hyperplane rounding has the property that when the SDP opt is beta, the expected value of the cut is 0.87, at least 0.878 beta, then you can say, oh, by the probabilistic method, if the expectation is at least 0.878 beta, there must exist a cut yeah, whose value is at least 0.878 beta, which contradicts opt less than 0.878 beta. Uh, so yeah, so you don't need it to make this deduction. And one reason I'm glossing over it is like basically, um, whenever you have a randomized approximation algorithm like this for a CSP, you can convert it to like a de uh, deterministic one um, very easily. Uh, in particular, like you can run it like n times and pick the best uh, solution that you get. And then a simple Markov argument that I'll let you think about shows that you're with high probability, you'll find a solution whose value is at least the expected value minus one over N. Um, so that's why I'm always glossing over, like I don't mind if the algorithms are randomized and we only care about the expectation. 
Okay, so uh, let me conclude with uh, one long slide. It's a tale of the Gomez Williamson algorithm on two graphs. Actually, I should mention that, uh, you know, I only have like two minutes left. So I'll give this slide, and then I have a little bit more content, like one or two more slides that I'll add to this video at the end, uh, in which I, you know, tell you what is the PCP theorem and what is the unique games conjecture, among other things. But let me end uh, just this portion by talking about the Gomez Williamson algorithm on two graphs, because I think it'll illustrate this difference between certification and, well, it'll illustrate like another confusing point, potentially confusing point. So the first graph I want to talk about is, uh, looks kind of like this. Uh, the vertices are the corners of a cube centered at the origin, but I don't put in the normal edges. Think of this cube as sitting in, you know, high dimensional space. Um, I connect two vertices by edges if, uh, like, the origin is here, and I consider connecting two vertices if the angle between the vectors going to those corners is at least three quarters pi, or 135 degrees. Okay, so this vertex, you know, it's connected to like the, the vertices that are kind of like sufficiently far away from it. So the dotted things are not the edges, the yellow things are the edges, and you have the same picture for every vertex. So I'm, not, I'm just going to tell you some facts that are not necessarily easy to prove, uh, but they're true. So the first question is like, what is the a maximum cut in this graph? Um, the maximum cut in this graph, you might guess it, if you actually take any axis parallel hyperplane, it turns out you can prove that this is the maximum cut. And once you know that, it's not hard to show that the actual optimum value, is, fraction of edges cut, is basically this quantity, half minus a half cos 135 degrees, also known as half plus one over two root two, which is about 0.85. So in this graph, the best, uh, at least in high dimensions, the best cut cuts about 85% of the edges. Now what about the SDP algorithm? Well, remember, in the STP algorithm, you're trying to assign a unit vector to each vertex. And our graph is already kind of geometrical. And in fact, it turns out that the optimal STP assignment of vectors to vertices is like the identity mapping that just assigns each vertex to like where it really is in space. And you can show that the STP opt value is equal to the true opt. The STP opt is 85%. So here, like the STP has done a perfect job of certifying the solution. It says it's at most 85%, and indeed the opt is 85%. But if you do the Gomans Williamson random hyperplane rounding, um, it'll not produce an axis parallel hyperplane. It'll produce some like, you know, random one. And you can show that it in expectation will give a cut that only cuts on three quarters of the edges. This is the same three quarters. So it only cut 0.75 of the edges. And by the way, this 0.75 over 0.85 is really close to this 0.88 value, 0.878 value. So this is a case where the optimum STP opt value gives a perfect certification, but the algorithm only gets a 0.878 factor as like a search optimization problem. On the other hand, there's the opposite occurrence for a different graph. This is interesting. So you can take another kind of geometric graph where you take a sphere in high dimensions, a unit sphere, and you set the vertices to be quote unquote all points on the surface of the sphere. Okay, you have to like, to make it a finite graph, you have to discretize this instance, but just imagine like you put in all points and you use the exact same edges for every uh, two points in the sphere, you connect them if their angle is at least 135 degrees. So each uh, point is connected to like a bunch of points that are like quite far away. For this graph, some other interesting things happen. It's perfectly rotationally symmetric. So the best cut in this graph, this is hard to prove, but it's true. The best cut in this graph is any hyperplane through the origin cuts. And any hyperplane through the origin cut, you can show cuts about three quarters of the edges. So opt is like three quarters. If you give this to SDP, it turns out again that the best SDP solution for associating a unit vector to each vertex is like the identity mapping. You just let the vertices be themselves. And then you can show the SDP value is bigger. It's this 85% number. So this is a funny case where the SDP is like a relaxation. It's like as far away from the optimum. It's like 0.87 away, away from the optimum. It's bigger than this 0.75. But ironically, if you do random hyperplane rounding on the vectors you get back, you know, you get a hyperplane through the origin and those are optimal. So this is a case where 
the random uh, rounding algorithm actually will find you an essentially optimal cut of value three quarters, um, even though the STP opt value is off. Okay, so this is a this situation is a good pair of situations to keep in mind when you're trying to understand the difference between um, sort of certification algorithms and approximation algorithms. Okay, so let me uh, end the lecture there. As I mentioned, I'll add like five minutes onto this lecture later. I'm going to uh, stop the recording now, uh, but you can feel free to stick around and ask me any questions you have. Here's the last bit I wanted to add to that lecture. Um, okay, so I want to just tell you some known complexity results for alpha, comma, beta approximating various uh, simple CSPs. So let me start with uh, the 3SAT problem, or maybe more accurately, the E3SAT problem, where every clause has to have exactly three literals per uh, OR. And we can think of this as an optimization problem by also imagining the version where you're trying to find a truth assignment that satisfies as many clauses as possible. Okay, so the first result here is that 1, 1 approximation is NP complete. And just remember that 1, 1 approximation means that when the uh, best truth assignment satisfies 100% of the clauses, the algorithm should find a truth assignment satisfying 100% of the clauses. In other words, it's the satisfiability problem. You have to find uh, satisfying assignments when they exist or else decide that they're uh, non-existent. And so this is just the fact that, uh, you know, the 3SAT problem or the E3SAT problem is NP complete. That's been known since time immemorial. Uh, but there's still an NP hardness result for this, even when you're not so ambitious as to try to find perfectly satisfying assignments. So uh, imagine that you're given a perfectly satisfiable E3SAT uh, instance, and your only goal is to try to find an assignment that satisfies 0.99999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
actually, uh, so the hardness results still stand for this because 3 sat is more general than E3 sat. So since uh, the 7 eighths plus epsilon is hard for E3 sat, it's also hard for 3 sat. Uh, but what about the algorithm? Well, for example, the pick a random algor assignment algorithm doesn't quite work anymore because actually clauses of length one and two are only satisfied by a random assignment with probabilities a half and three quarters, which is less than seven eighths. Um, so that doesn't quite work. It's funny, you think that like clauses of length one and two should make the problem kind of easier, but formally they don't. Uh, it is known that you can get seven eighths, also in the three sat case, when clauses of length one and two are allowed in polynomial time. But this turns out to be extremely, extremely difficult. It's an extremely difficult analysis of a semi-definite programming-based algorithm due to Karloff and Zwick from 1997. In fact, they didn't even quite prove it. They just gave extremely good numerical evidence that it was true. And only subsequently Zwick was able to give a computer-assisted proof that the algorithm was correct in that it gave a 7 eighths uh, comma 1 approximation for the 3 sat problem. OK, enough about 3 sat. Uh, let me move on to max cut which is an even simpler, in some sense, uh, well, even simpler CSP. So max cut, as we all know, is uh, NP hard, or at least that's something you learn early on in complexity theory. What that really means is finding the optimum cut is NP hard. When the optimum cut is 100% of the edges, the task is actually not NP hard. That's testing if a graph is bipartite. Uh, but if you inspect the proof, the you know, classical textbook proof that max cut is NP complete, what it shows is that for some specific constant, you know, between a half and one, let's say three quarters, um, if I give you a graph where the maximum cut cuts a three quarters fraction of the edges, it's NP complete to find, or NP hard to find such uh, an optimum cut. So now let me tell you about a few more uh, results that are known on the subject of trying to find a cut that cuts three quarters of the edges in a graph. So the first thing I'll tell you is that um, this is sometimes hard. If I even if I give you a graph where the optimum cut is essentially four fifths of the edges. So uh, for any epsilon greater than zero, if I give you a cut where four fifths minus epsilon of the edges can be cut, so seventy nine point nine 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 percent, even in that case, it's still hard to find a cut that cuts three quarters of the edges. That's a result uh, building on Hostad's work due to uh, Trevisan, uh, Sorkin, Sudan, and Williamson. Uh, on the other hand, if it, this is a little bit of an exercise, but you can uh, use the Gomans Williamson algorithm to get that uh, in graphs where the optimum cut is a half plus one over two root two fraction of the edges, or this 0.85 fraction of the edges that we've seen before, then it is possible in polynomial time using Gomans Williamson to cut, find a cut that uh, cuts three quarters of the edges. Okay, so if uh, the graph is like 85% cuttable, you can get three quarters. But if it's only 80% cuttable or 79.9% cuttable, you cannot get three quarters unless P equals NP. What about in between? Let's say between 80% and 85%, there's 83% or five sixths. And here's a fact of life. Uh, is it possible to three quarters comma five sixths approximate max cut? This is unknown. It's a gap in our knowledge. If I give you a graph where it's possible to cut five sixths of the edges, can you find efficiently a cut that cuts three quarters of the edges? This is open. And it's a problem just like factoring or graph isomorphism. You know, one of these mystery status problems where we don't know that it's in polynomial time and we don't know that it's NP hard. So that's still a great open mystery about max cut. Uh, so let me tell you about one more problem. This is this uh, problem I mentioned before called max bijection. It's a CSP where all the constraints involve two variables. They're to be assigned values between uh, 1 and q, where q is you think of as maybe a large number. And they have this bijective property, the constraints, that whenever you set one variable to a certain value, uh, participating in a constraint with another variable, there will be exactly one unique value to set this other variable to uh, that will make this constraint satisfied. So as we mentioned before, um, if I give you a 100% uh, satisfiable instances, instance of this max bijection problem, then in polynomial time, it's easy to find a 100% satisfying assignment. You know, it's, this is a propagation algorithm I mentioned. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's NP hard in general to find the optimum assignment in a max bijection problem. Uh, really, this actually follows 
uh, from the fact that max cut is NP-hard, and max cut is a special case of this max bijection problem when Q is 2. But in any case, it's true that for every epsilon greater than 0, it's NP-hard. If I give you a 1 minus epsilon satisfiable instance to find a 1 minus epsilon satisfying assignment. Now I mentioned this is a very interesting problem. It's connected to this thing called the unique games conjecture. Uh, so let me tell you a couple of facts along this line. Uh, so this is not the unique games conjecture, but the first thing I wrote here in white. Um, if I give you a 1 minus epsilon satisfiable assignment, and I ask you to, let me just take this back, to find an assignment that satisfies half of the constraints. So it's almost perfectly satisfiable, but I just want you to find an assignment satisfying half of the constraints. You can do this in polynomial time if Q is 2. But the problem gets harder the larger Q is. And if Q is 3 or higher than 3, it's not known if you can uh, do this task, getting 50% of the constraints satisfied, even when you're promised that 99.99% .99 of them are satisfiable. And uh, finally, the unique games conjecture is sort of asking about this exactly when Q is large. So the unique games conjecture, was in, as initially uh, posed by Cote in 2002, was the conjecture that for all epsilon greater than zero, there's a large enough Q depending on epsilon, such that even if I give you a one minus epsilon uh, satisfiable instance of this max bijection problem on domain of size Q, it's NP hard even to find uh, an assignment that satisfies an epsilon fraction of the constraints. So this is an extremely strong conjecture and uh, it was really not clear if there was evidence that you know, such an easy constraint satisfaction problem could indeed be so NP-hard. Um, and thoughts of about whether it's true or not have gone back and forth over the years. Let me mention that it's, it's known that this is equivalent to the harder task of finding uh, an assignment that satisfies half of the constraints on instances which are one minus uh, epsilon satisfiable. That requires a theorem, but um, if the getting half is NP-hard, then even getting epsilon is also NP-hard. That's known. As I said, you know, opinions went back and forth over this over the years. At first, maybe people thought, oh, okay, sure, why not? Subash Code knows what he's talking about. Maybe it's NP-hard. Then people thought uh, some more about algorithms, and they got the idea that maybe it's not NP-hard, maybe it's in polynomial time. Uh, but the latest uh, salvo in these wars came just recently, and it swung the tide in favor of maybe hardness. So this was not quite proven. Um, but sort of a version where the half is in the other place uh, was shown to be NP-hard. So building on several previous works uh, over the last few years, Cote, Minzer, and Safran in 2018 showed that if I give you a, one of these max bijection instances where the optimum solution satisfies at least half of the constraints, so it's not like almost satisfiable, it's not 99.9% .9 satisfiable, but it's half satisfiable, then indeed it is uh, NP-hard to find even an epsilon satisfying assignment, assuming the domain size Q is large enough. So this is sort of considered a half the unique games conjecture. This is a consequence of the two to one conjecture being proven true by Cote, Minzer, and Safra.